What's up everybody, Tendo here, that there's Hannah Warrior Princess, and listen, this video that you're watching right now, this is the 365th day in a row that we've posted a YouTube video. Isn't that wild? Listen, as far as goals go, this is the biggest goal that I've ever set and accomplished, and I'm feeling pretty proud of myself. So listen, we're gonna do a lot of things to celebrate this momentous occasion today, and the first thing we're gonna do to celebrate is get some pizza because I don't know any other way to celebrate really. But then other than that today, we've got some prezzies from some of you guys to open. Pretty stoked about that. We're gonna do some Q&A stuff in this video uh, and answer some burning questions you guys have had, but none of that matters until after I've had some pizza. So, so stick around. Unless you want me to go off to Dallas by myself. Dallas, Celeb. So the pizza that we have ordered is a super deep dish pizza, so it's gonna take a little while for us to get it. So let's go ahead and knock out a few Q&A questions here. And uh, we'll just sprinkle some of you guys' questions all throughout the video as we go. So let's start off with a question from old Billy. He says, question for the Q&A, what would be your top three dream finds while thrifting game related or otherwise? Well, why don't you start? Cause you'd probably answer the otherwise. Yes. What would you just love to find? I would love to find a set of the Pyrex mixing bowls in the um, polka dot pattern. Okay. That's one of my my. That's what comes goals. to mind first? Yeah. I'll tell you what I would like to find, and it'd just be, let's just say I'd like to find three of these. I'd like to find some of those inbox Play It Loud Game Boys. That'd be Spe sweet. Specifically <laughs> the yellow one, because it's like the only yellow Game Boy. Not the only, but uh, the original yellow Game Boy in the Play It Loud series. Can you give us an update on the booth in Kentucky? How's it working with your friend helping out? Is it worth it to have to buy all the products but still have to split the profit with your friend? So that's a great question, and it, the timing of your question is impeccable because quite unfortunately, the flea market that our booth is in in Kentucky is closing down. We just got an email yesterday, maybe it was the day before, and um, I'm not gonna get into this now because there's way too much to talk about regarding this, but uh, we're gonna have to drive home to Kentucky and get all that stock and bring it back here, I guess. Um, it's not an ideal time to do it because of the Rona and stuff, but uh, this is a very new development. But really to answer your question, it's quite a bummer that it's shutting down because it's actually, it was one of our best performing booths and made us plenty of money. And uh, it was all working out well. And I'm really bummed it's closing down. There are other places in my hometown where we could keep that stuff, but like with the uh, shakiness and uh, uncertainty that's going on because of the coronavirus and stuff, we're probably not gonna open up another one there right now. So maybe we'll go back and, and do it again later, but. I bummed because it was working out well. Jason asks, questions for the Q&A vid with 2020 being the year that it has been, very difficult. What continues to be a driving force behind your positivity? Do you look at being a content creator as a job or has that changed since starting and it's now something else at this point? All right, so that's the first question, I guess. How do, basically you're asking how do we stay positive despite how negative 2020 has been? That's been difficult. It's not easy to do, um, but We've ultimately been successful at what we're trying to do with this channel. We've had uh, growth, our speed of growth has been the top percentile. And so we do feel the importance of the weight of that. Uh, it's not easy to obtain a following on YouTube. It's not easy to do what we do. It's not easy to have what we've found. So understanding that and understanding the weight of that has definitely made us stay focused and do everything we can to keep it, and to not ruin it, not to squander it. And, and honestly, it's, you, you worded this question very well because we almost did lose it because right in the middle of the pandemic, right when we were all locked down at home, our viewership tanked. It was cut in half and then some for a while because we couldn't get out of the house and go do what we wanted. And it would have been very easy at that time to just say, well, we tried, we didn't see this coming. The pandemic's gonna ruin this, uh, but we kept going. We kept making videos through that despite the low viewership and honestly it paid off because as soon as we could go back outside and go thrifting, our viewership quadrupled even times five. I mean, we're, we went from 500 views in the middle of that to now sometimes 5,000 views a day. So 
Um, to answer that first question, just the importance of what we're doing keeps driving us. The importance of maintaining what we have, and you know, not that I'm saying our thrifting videos are important in the world, that's ridiculous, but do we look at being a content creator as a job? Why don't you answer that part? Does it feel like you're working? No, I mean, having quit a normal job to go do this, it's light years different. Yeah. It's just... It feels like we're waking up and <laughs> effing around all day. Uh, go ahead. It's just a lot of fun. Like, it's what we wanted to do for a long time, and so now being able to actually do it, it's, it's really exciting, and that kind of helps yeah drive our positivity a little bit too well 365 videos in a row now it, it's not felt like work yet i mean of course there's some nights where i'm like oh god i've got to edit it's midnight when i even start and that does suck and that does feel a bit like work but right now it does not look like we're going to have to go back to doing normal jobs at all and um because of that as long as that's the case and i don't know that it'll ever feel like work but thank you for that question it's very well worded and here's another good question uh, what direction will the channel go in once you complete your gaming collection what do you guys have in mind any other things you may start a collection of great question and i most of these questions you guys have asked that are really well thought out i want to give long answers to but obviously i'm not going to do that this or this video is going to be an hour long um I personally would like to, once the income's there, once we really get some real YouTube ad revenue, um, I'd like to have a big building, some sort of warehouse where we still go thrifting and stuff, and maybe it's not for reselling anymore, but like we buy, like I have this dream to like buy a billion Duplo Lego blocks and build a TARDIS out of it, you know what I mean? And so I think one day when we have more of the gaming stuff than we could ever imagine having, uh, and we're a little bit further down the road, I think we could definitely do a lot more videos just, excuse my language, but completely effing off. You know what I mean? <laughs> just like thrift random awesome nonsense and build it into something else, that kind of thing. That's kind of my plan for the future when uh, the, road, the video game road kind of runs out. Or sooner. If I had a million dollars in the bank account tomorrow, I'd probably go build that Duplo Lego. What about you? <laughs> just make like a nerd shrine. Yeah. <laughs> and just build, buy a huge building and hoard it up with all the thrifted stuff I could ever find. How did you and Hannah meet? And did you ask her out? Y'all are too cute. Do you want to answer that? Do you know? I don't know if we know the answer. Well, I know that we... We were in an acting class together that neither one of us really had any business being in. We, we went in an acting <laughs> class and we were pretty much just together from then on. And this is one of those. We didn't really t talk about it much. We, we sat by each other in the class and just kind of... Started holding hands. We hung out. And uh, <laughs> that was like eight years ago, nine years ago now. <laughs> what are the best uh, road trip snacks? Snyder of Hanover's Buffalo Wing Pretzels, the end. I like the honey mustard ones. Agree to disagree. <laughs> all right, here's a question we get asked a lot. Have you considered removing all the stickers off your games? I think it makes my game collection look so good, but that might just be me and my OCD. Well, 365 days since I started buying video games, all of the video games in my collection you see, I did not own before 365 days ago. So do the math. And every game takes how long? to take the stickers off four or five minutes. I mean, maybe it's faster if you get in a groove. So we're talking entire days of the last 365 days. It would have taken me to remove all those stickers. Personally, I would prefer them all not be there, but I simply do not have the time to take them off. So for now, until I can afford to pay somebody to remove them for me, they're <laughs> staying right there. Goodwill like, stickers are the devil. <laughs> if you'd like to volunteer to come over and take them off, I might take you up on that. Have you ever seen what UK charity shops are like? Um, no, but I've been told a lot. Thank you very much. I've been told a ton. Uh, you guys comment all the time and say how much you wish your shops looked like ours, and I feel for you guys not having access to the kind of goodwills we do. But um, I have actually seen them on YouTube videos before. Um, they look like mom and pop shops. Yeah, they look like our mom and pop thrift shops here. But I, I do want to say we do hope to come and check them out one day soon. Love your show. Love the creativity that goes on with your show. Question, where is Patrick? Uh, Patrick moved back to Kentucky, and he's currently living there and working on uh, some new stuff of his own. But we will be catching up with him next time we go back to Kentucky, so hang out for that. Here's a good question. What has been the most valuable Funko Pop that you have found thrifting? Also, what has been Hannah's most valuable clothing item? I think you'll have to answer both of those because yeah. you remember the Pops better than me. I want to say... 
there's one that I know is more valuable than the one I can think of, but I can't think of what that one was. Well, right do you now. know the dollar amount? We've about a hundred dollars. About a hundred bucks, yeah. yeah um, and, and it was probably one of the supernatural supernatural pops. We're not gonna remember which so. one specifically, but we've had more than one hundred dollar supernatural pop. Most valuable clothing find was a Levi jacket from I want to say 1940s. 1940s. Post post World War II for sure, but um, it went for about fifteen hundred dollars immediately. So I probably could have got more out of it. And we're still trying to top that one. So here's another great question for Mandy. You made it a year of daily vids. What happens next? Will you still do daily or will you take a break? For now, we're still planning on daily videos. And I think the only thing that's going to change is that I'm really going to try to carve out a way for us to do a little bit more of what we want and be a little less a slave to having to go thrifting. Um, Given the scare that happened with the coronavirus and our viewership going down, is we haven't missed a day of thrifting once, not once since we, uh, since the coronavirus lockdown lifted, because we were just scared to go backwards. We're scared to lose the viewership. We're scared to lose this dream we're building. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to go crazy. We don't want to get burnt out. So especially when we go get on the road, if we're in a part of the you know world where there's not a lot of thrifting, we're just going to have to be fine making videos, seeing the sights, and doing attractions, and doing fun stuff, and perhaps from time to time doing a little less thrifting, a little less. You know, that's that's the one thing that's going to change, and it's going to have to because. I get bored easy, she's kind of the same way, and we just don't want to have to be stuck doing any one thing. I don't want to be a gaming channel, I don't want to be a thrifting channel, I don't want to be married to any one of these things. I like doing all these things and I appreciate that a lot of you are here for very singular reasons. Some of you just love the video games, some of you just love thrifting in general, some of you just love Hannah, and I do too, <laughs> and I appreciate that. But we. We really do want to just keep doing what we want to do. We want to keep making stuff, and if a day comes along we don't feel like thrifting, we're gonna from here on out. Rather than just taking random days off, we're just gonna we're just gonna film whatever we do and keep it at that. You feel the same? I do. I think like the trajectory of the channel question that we had earlier. Like I think I just want to be able to do a little bit more adventure stuff. Agreed. That's the only thing that's gonna change. We're gonna just find a way to do more. That's, that's really it. When you buy all those video games, do you test them before you put them in your toy booth on eBay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Uh, yes, we test all our games. You gotta, or you're gonna get them brought back. So that's all I did last night. <laughs> Hannah, copy, uh, Hannah does tests on about five copies of Wii Sports a day, it seems like sometimes. What's the most expensive game you own in your collection? That's a sealed copy of Harvest Moon 2 for the Game Boy. $250 game or something like that. All right, guys, thanks for those questions. But look, our wings are here and they look fantastic and we're hungry. So let us eat and then we'll continue throughout the day as we do what we do today. We'll continue to answer your questions. Wings are done. We cleared them out real fast. And they're good. Next question. All right, wings are done. They were good. My mouth is a little hot now, but uh, what is the grossest thing you have found in the bins? I'm not sure if we should talk about that right before we start eating. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's never been anything too gross. I've heard of people finding diapers and stuff, but some people end up throwing a little trash in, literal trash from their trash can sometimes when they donate, I guess, accidentally. I don't know. I have, so you see trash. I have found a, we'll call it an X-rated toy. Okay. There you go. Uh, will the Vans exterior be covered in stickers? No. I'm pro I kind of just like my Grand Theft Auto cheat code on the back of it. I mean, I'm not saying I won't put it anymore, but I'm not just going to go wild and cover it. When you finally get the van done, will you be going to every state in the U.S. or just certain ones? If so, are you going to be coming to Nebraska? It's a good question. I don't know. Uh, we kind of don't play it that far ahead. We'd like to just jump in the van and go. But we do want to visit every state together. And we've already visited a lot of them uh, well before we had this channel. So we'll see. But we'll definitely hit Nebraska at some point. Will you be coming to Florida? Do you ever have plans on doing any subscriber meetups? Florida's great. I love to tell this story where last time I was there, my shoes melted off in a parking lot. <laughs> True story. But um, yeah, uh, definitely want to go. As far as doing fan meetups, We've been asked this a couple times recently, and 
Uh, it's definitely the kind of thing we want to do. We definitely love to have some interaction with you guys. But the last time we did it, it didn't go so well. Uh, and it led us to basically realize that we need to wait until we're a little bit bigger to do it so that we can like do it properly and actually like get a venue or do it at a restaurant that allows that kind of thing and, and have it a little bit more structured because just saying hey we're going to be here come meet up I wouldn't say it was dangerous but it wasn't ideal it, it didn't turn into a great situation last time we did it so um, yes we want to do it but you'll probably see us hold off till we're large enough that we can go to some big city and count on 10, 15, 20 people showing up at a venue and doing something with a little bit more structure. But thanks for the question. If you could eat uh, barbecue sauce or hot sauce for the rest of your life, which would it be? It's going to be a completely different answer. Hot sauce for sure. Barbecue sauce. And I don't really <laughs> like barbecue sauce that much and she doesn't really like hot sauce that much. So, but for me, it's just chicken wings. I like hot sauce on chicken wings more yeah. than I like it on the barbecue right, sauce on chicken wings. Right, but you don't but... live and die by eating chicken, the times you eat chicken wings. No. What is the most you've spent in one day of thrifting? Several hundred bucks? Yeah. Uh, half off Mondays, even though everything's half off, we go crazy and buy everything. So, half off Monday. What are the weirdest things that you would want to collect? Mine is uh, mariachis and donkeys. That's very, very specific. Very specific. Uh, tartises, full size tartises built out of completely random materials. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. If you guys don't think I'm serious, you're going to turn on this channel one day and I'm just going to have built a tortoise out of Legos or Duplo. You, do you have an answer to that? Mine's probably just going to be kitchen stuff. I don't, uh, nothing kitchen. specific. <laughs> How much weight have you lost uh, in this one year? I lost a lot, but I gained most of it back during the pandemic. So there's that. What is your favorite video game you have found while thrifting? Probably Mario Sunshine. What are your favorite, least favorite cities to thrift in? Well, favorite has been here. We live here because it's the best we've ever seen in the world. Least favorite? I've never been in a city and just said, oh, I hate the thrifting here. I mean, obviously, small towns like my hometown, you're not going to have as much, but it's really kind of a nice uh, adventure to still try to find something when the town is small. Is your goal as the channel grows to live in a van uh, and do the RV van life? If so, what would you do with your collection and hand it to do or seems just stuff? It's not really the goal. Uh, we have talked about whether or not, uh, if we should, in order to kind of like use our money for something other than rent, you know? I, believe me, there's plenty of people watching who are gonna be like, live in a van? It's a thing a lot of people do, especially people trying to live lifestyles like we do. So that's not really our goal right now. If we did, it would more so be because we've got enough money coming in that we can afford a good camper, RV, sprinter type setup, and then also afford a workshop here to still have a home base. It'd be very hard for us to do what we're doing without having at least a home base. So maybe we'll get an office space one of these days and also a big sprinter and kind of live in the sprinter and do all this work in office space. But right now, no, it's not the plan though it would be fun to just live on the road and go I definitely I don't know how to say this without sounding silly but my spirit my desire like that I'm into that I'm into the just the idea of rambling around what advice would you give for a new thrifter too, there's too much advice to squeeze into this but if you're it, it really depends are you reselling are you, re, are you thrifting to collect um, if you're reselling just take your time and don't get caught up in being the person that watches all kinds of tutorials on what to buy and what resells. Like, not that you shouldn't do that stuff, but don't live and die by it. You, you read our comments sometimes, you'll see that some people are just like, you don't resell records? Like, you're stupid. You're gonna have everybody tell you that you should do this, you should do that. Find something that you can get into and like doing and like reselling and do that. If you're just thrifting to collect, it's all about frequency. Go as much as you can to the thrift store nearest to you. And if you go enough times, you'll be there when they're restocking, you'll get something good. It's all about the law of averages. Of course, it's stringy cheese. <laughs> this one's not as stringy as... <laughs> mm, it looks good though. It is good stuff. How do you feel about that? Very excited. Uh, thank you very much. Enjoy. It is hot though, for Well, the pizza's here, so I guess this means that it's time to uh, it's time to eat, so go away. Let us eat this food. <laughs> so we got dessert. This is called a pizza cookie, and it's as good as it looks. I don't know if you can get a good look at it, but just look at this thing. It's basically just a freshly baked cookie, giant cookie with a uh, smattering of ice cream on top. <laughs> now we get to fight over who gets the cherry. Mm. 
Are you on rock, paper, scissors? All right, here we go. Rock, paper, scissors, then go. Okay. Rock, paper, scissors, go. <laughs> you can have it. Aww. My favorite part about eating at this restaurant is the walk in the Astro Turf whenever we get done because it feels real good on the feet, don't it? Squishy. It's very nice. But if you're ever in Phoenix or in Chicago, I definitely recommend Lou Manati's is what that place is called. I don't know of any other cities it's in, but they might have expanded since then. I know when we moved here, there was like one, there was like one Luminati's here, and now there's like four or five or something. It's kind of crazy, but it's very good. Five stars, we'll eat again. All right, before we keep going, we did get one question about the van today. I figured we might as well answer this question while we're sitting in the van, and it only seems fitting. But uh, Beefy Frito Burrito said, what inspired you to purchase a van to travel? Well, honestly, Purchasing the van came about just because I've always owned vans. I've always transported a lot of stuff. I think the earliest van I bought, I was a musician at the time, and it was all about transporting my band, myself, and all of our equipment all across Kentucky and around the states around Kentucky playing music. And I, ever since then, I've just I've preferred to have one because they're big and comfortable. Now, as far as buying one to travel in, uh, that's just what we're into. Travel is what we're into. So this van was cheap, so that's why we bought this one. I paid fifteen hundred bucks for it. I haven't put a ton into it other than the, you know, the the add-ons here in the back to make it into a quote-unquote camper. But the inspiration is just wanting to get on the road, man. It's just how I'm made. I don't want to be in one place. I want to move around. If someone's looking for a van like ours or a Chevy Express van, what budget should they start with to start looking well? Um, budget wise, again, I paid $1,500 for this. I probably have a little bit more confidence than the average person would because if it breaks down in a general sense, I could probably fix it if I have to. Like if we were stuck on the side of the road, I've got my tools in the back. As long as it's not like a transmission blowing up, I can pretty much fix it. I can go to an auto parts store. I can pick up the parts. I can get it done. So it's a little hard for me to tell you to buy a $1,500 van because everyone's going to tell you, you know, those are going to have problems. Maybe you shouldn't, but I'm telling you, a Chevy Astro or a GMC Safari, same van, different name. Um, you can get those for like 1500 bucks right now, even less sometimes. They're good little reliable vans. You could drive all over the place, throw a bed in the back. If you're into traveling, man, vans are the way to go. That's all I'm saying. Guess what? It's time to open Prezi's. Full disclosure, these aren't presents that people sent specifically for this video or anything but uh you guys have been kind enough over the last year to send us plenty plenty of packages uh to open on our videos and this last couple weeks have been no different except we have saved them up to open all on this video so this is, yeah it's about a week's worth of packages a week and a half um, I kind of wish I had waited. There was a week, about a week ago, a week and a half ago, there was a couple really large packages we opened and we should have saved them for this. But I don't think I realized that uh, this was so close yeah. a couple weeks ago. I really didn't. Um, but it is. It's here. It's a year. If you're watching this right now, it's been a year. And so we're going to open these packages in celebration and we're going to pretend they're birthday prezzies. And, uh, and then we'll continue. We've got more going on after this bit of the video. This is not the wrap up. I repeat, I know you're used to seeing us over here when it's time to wrap the video up, but we're just, uh, we can't wait to open these presents anymore. Now, the real question is, where are our scissors? <gasps> we um, cannot forget the scissors. This is like a tradition here. Yeah, grab them. We have a tradition opening up presents here on this segment with Scissors Gigantus. They were right. actually where they go. That's why we couldn't find them. <laughs> All right. Well, the first thing we're going to open up real quick, uh, friends of the channel, Dan and Elisa, uh, they sent us, or they gave us these uh, Power Ranger cards last time we saw them. And there's like, I don't know, I can't decide if I should open them or keep them. What, are they better in the package or not? It's such a tough decision. So we're going to just open one. And I'm going to open this one because it feels like it has a pog inside or something. You're not going to be able to see it on camera, but like there's a, there's a thingy. So if there's a pog in this, I'm going to, I'm going to pee myself. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Don't pee yourself. I don't want to clean that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Come on now. All right, we're pulling out the pog first. I swear it's a pog. No way. It's legit a pog. Power Rangers power caps. Five of ten. 
Isn't that beautiful? Hold on, it's let me show so the camera. Cool. And I guess probably for legal reasons, it's power caps. And then there's uh, trading cards inside. I better if I pull a white ranger or green ranger on the first one. From 1994. Be... Check that out. Oh. oh, oh, yes, oh yes. Oh, look at the hollow. Look at the hollow Megazord. This would be something that'd be really cool to like frame. I don't know what I'm talking about. We're gonna open the other ones. <laughs> I gotta know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we, we ate lunch with them last week and they're like, oh, we thought you'd like these. And I was like, well, I guess you know me so well. <laughs> All right, power cap number two, pterodactyl. I didn't even really pay attention to what the first one was. Mastodon. All right, Neat. look at this. Sabertooth. They're kind of Ooh, crispy. Sticking, yeah, they're sticking together. <laughs> Let's go. Favorite ranger, black ranger. Oh, yes. You want to look at them? The command center. The whole squad. That's what my squad looks like when we meet up to go video game hunting. <laughs> Zordon. And look at this hollow Black Ranger. That's awesome. All right, I'm not going to open the other two. They don't have pogs. We'll leave those sealed for now. Because I think I'll put some of these in like some card holder displays and put them on my Power Ranger shelf. And then uh, at least one of these I'll just set in the package on my Power Ranger shelf. But that's so cool. They have Pogs in them. Definitely need to uh, put that with the Pogs that Rose sent us. Rose sent us some Pogs a couple weeks ago. So speaking of which, let's open Rose's package first. Uh, Rose is from Guam, if you don't know. She sent us several packages before. How do I get in this? All right. So open this first from the makers of, what does this say? Tun Tung Toffees, and known as the Hogwarts Troublemakers. Oh, what? could you guess who? All right, it's like trivia. Here you go. Read that, and I'm gonna peek. <laughs> Dear Tendo and Hannah the Queen. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> You may read on camera, sweet. By this point, you're probably not surprised I'm sending you guys more random nonsense. This one has a specific theme, however. I am sending a certain collection so you can start collecting some of, your, of yours. You mentioned a few times that you've been meaning to collect these certain items, so here you go. I've already seen them. <laughs> Keep up the great work, you guys. As always, thank you for the continued content. Best wishes, Rose. P.S. Don't throw the envelope away. Don't throw the Is envelope away. Interesting. Here you go. Cool. All right, here we go. So, she sent us a crap ton of mini figs, <gasps> and I think they're all—they're almost all the same character. All right, get start opening those, and I'm going to show them off. This is amazing. Oh wow! Look at that. How about that? That's beautiful. Spider-Man. I like the little Ziploc bags they've come in too. They're very nice. Another Batman. It is something we've always talked about collecting, minifigs, but we've just never quite, uh, at one time before we opened our very first toy booth, we had a bunch, but we ended up selling those. These might, these will be worth keeping. It's like, let's just collect every variation of Batman there is. Uh, you'll have to comment below, Rose. Where did you get these? Are these proper uh, branded Legos or are they like aftermarket, do you know? Because I, I know there's a lot of that out there. A lot of the times in the antique stores like we sell at just another Batman. Oh my gosh. And another Spider-Man. Uh, but there's a lot of people selling stuff at the flea markets like we sell at that sell this exact same kind of thing. Look at his fancy oh weaponry. Gosh. Batman with his grappling gun, that's my favorite one. That's beautiful. Now, I don't want to make sure I didn't miss anything she put in there. Did you know this is what she's talking about? This envelope is from... Oh, the, she was talking about the envelope specifically. It's from the Weasley Brothers uh, joke store. I don't it's remember. super cool. I don't remember the name of the store. I feel I really bad. I don't either, but I, I'm walking through it in my head. Yeah, like... <laughs> yeah it, I, you definitely can have a strong uh, visualization of it from the movie. It looks so dope in the movie. So, you know, there was, uh, Harry Potter was always interesting because sometimes my imagination was better and sometimes the movie was better. It just kind of depends. But that scene with uh, George and Fred's uh, store definitely looked better in the movie than it ever did in my imagination. All right, let's keep moving here. 
This feels like a single game. This is from Josh and Terry. From South Carolina. From South Carolina. And uh, I can't wait to see what's in here. Or it might not be a game, it might be a DVD. Who knows? But it's what it feels like one. It's definitely disc case shaped. Yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Alright. I I'm, I should not look why I do this because I feel like I'm gonna get a peek. I got a peek. Oh no! <laughs> All right, there's a note. Let's do the note first. Please read on video. We are big fans of your channel and wanted to send y'all some things you might enjoy. I noticed you didn't have a copy of this Batman game, so I had to send it your way. Also, my girlfriend runs a pretty successful Depop jewelry business and had to include something for the Warrior Princess, so we were wrong. It is not a singular yes. game. We have been inspired by your channel to start our own thrift hunt channel. We are called Dummy Records and Thrift. That's all. That's a good name. We hope to be as successful as y'all one day. Thank you so much for the entertainment. It would be an honor if you called out the channel. So yeah, you guys check out uh, Dummy Records and Thrift. You guys also be sure to just kind of leave a comment below so people looking at the comments can find you guys. Go check them out. And tell me what your Depop handle is too. I want to see your shop. Okay. Yeah, for sure. We, we love us some Depop. Are you kidding me? That's so cool. I found your thing. <laughs> I was looking in here. I was like, did I, did I miss it? Let me, let me show them this first. It's in perfect condition too. I will be playing this tonight. That's beautiful. We have a, we have a Wii plugged up right now because we've been testing a lot of games, so we'll put this in tonight. Are you ready for this? I am. This must be her Depop page. Yeah, oh, here sweet. we go. Sweet. So, I love this business card. Business card. Terry's Treats. Depop slash Terry's Treats, etc., etc., etc. Awesome. I'll Hold be giving that a gander tonight. Hold on to that, and I'll show you guys the jewelry before I show Hannah. Look at that. It's here a sweet go. business card. I need to make business cards. Yeah, for well, I've, <laughs> I've got some, but they just have like our YouTube page on it. So when people see us in public, don't open your eyes yet. I have So when people see us in public and they're like, what are you guys doing? I'm just like, here, business card. Go. <gasps> this is amazing. That is pretty, isn't it? I love this. Okay. Put it on. Oh, I didn't see the front yet. <laughs> That's what did you so just see? The back? I just saw the back. I was like, oh, it's like oh, a, a little silhouette. That's so cute. It was just and a shape of Pikachu. <laughs> and then there's a surprise on the other That's side. That's so cute. It's a proper Pikachu. All right. Next up is this one is from Matthew from Texas. Very nice. Texas is one of the places we're just dying to go to on our road trip because there's some good bins there. There's some good regular thrifting. And uh, I should probably not open that on top. Here we go. Going to be hard to top jewelry for Hannah, though. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We've got a note and a foldy thing. Ooh. Hannah and Tindo, before I even get started, your handwriting is very nice and neat. It's such a small size. Uh, Hannah and Tendo, greetings from Texas. Just wanted to send these your way as I thought you'd enjoy them. Uh, the tape was custom made by yours truly. Keep up with the content. Enjoy seeing your finds. Matthew at uh, Creep Sleeps. You might want to comment below too. Make sure we get you in there. Uh, I'm pretty excited. Just this, this, I don't know what this is, but like... This card is very, very, the envelope is substantial. Ooh, these are some prints. Uh, this looks like it's proper film too. Greetings from Silent Hill, America's small town. Ooh. Very is nice. Is it Silent Hill, like the video game Silent Hill? Yeah. Hey, what? What? I've always wanted one of these. It's a Lego clock. Have That's you ever, so cool. Have you ever seen one of these? I haven't. That's awesome. All right. There's something else in here. Unwrap that. He said the tape, so I'm guessing it's this that you okay. made. Well, yeah, that's what I thought it said, but then I was like, well, what are these? Those are cool. We'll have to check his Instagram. Maybe this is some stuff he's made, or maybe it's just, who knows, but I'm super into it. I really like the way this one looks. Come on, let me see. <laughs> Show the camera first. Right. It's so cool. What? 
So he's made a game case for Altered Beasts. Wait, no, it's a tape. Did you, like, record the music on here and everything? I command you to rise from your grave and rescue my daughter. This is, this is well done, my man. Very well done. Altered Beasts. But now I've got to find a tape player and see if you actually put anything on the tape. I'm, I'm imagining he just transferred the uh, soundtrack to it. That's awesome. That's so That's cool. completely unexpected, too. Like, here's you some bubble wrap. Yay! <laughs> I'm out. This is great. <laughs> Perfect timing. All right. Let's see. The next one is from Brandon. My oh, man, Brandon, where's he from? Do you remember? Illinois. Illinois. Your memory is strong. All right. Uh, how do it I get says it? says open this side first. Oh, does it? It does, on the back. Thanks for the instructions, because otherwise <laughs> I'd have just torn into some random corner. Were you a uh, unfold the gift wrap, Christmas present wrap opening, or were you a tear into it? Tear. I was actually, too, but in like an order. <laughs> actually, about 90, 95% of the time I was really good at guessing exactly what was in the pack. I was that kid. I knew I would, you know. Okay, Tindo and Hannah. Read out loud if you want. The wife and I love watching your videos every day. I always uh, start them on my lunch break and finish them at home. That's awesome. Uh, they put a smile on my face every day. Thanks for that. Here's something I hope you will enjoy. Do as you please with them, Brandon and Lauren. Yep. <laughs> right off the bat. Let's go. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> A big stack of Pokemon cards. You know what the best part of when some of you guys send us Pokemon cards is, is that you include the digital codes? Because I've got like a fat stack of them right now. <laughs> I'm about to go nuts on my online Pokemon card collecting. It's a big stack right That's there. A humongous stack. Why do I peek every time? That's why we hand it to me so that I give it to you and you okay. get to be surprised. <laughs> I'll stop. I'll stop because I just saw like the next two things and I'm like, let's go. Oh, wow. Okay. Because yeah, I know right off the bat. They're very similar things. I don't have this one. I, but I do have a lot from this series, so actually when I line these up on my shelf, that will add to my shelf for sure. No way! <laughs> it's a copy of... Is it sealed? Yeah, well, I'm trying to determine whether or not this is factory sealed, and I kind of think it actually is. Uh, but PSP, it's Cl Clerks PSP UMD, and it's definitely one I don't have, because I've never even seen this one, much less do I own it. No way. I think there's this is, several. This is the original. Well, don't give it away. This is the original Tron with Jeff Bridges. That's awesome. Neat. This is good timing, too, because I've kind of failed the last few weeks keeping my PSP UMD uh, collection cataloged. <sighs> Kill Bill, let's go. What? Seth, McFarlane, Seth MacFarlane's Cavalcade of Cartoon Comedy Uncensored. These are all, and they're all these, they're all these gold yellow labels too, which I don't have very many of. Eon Flux, the complete animated collection. That's cool, because I saw that movie they made of it, but I've never seen any animated stuff. One of my favorite Jet Li movies, if not my favorite one. Okay, there's a big box. Romeo Might Die might be my actual favorite, but that one, Hero, is my favorite epic Jet Li. Let's say that. I'm not going to peek. I'm not going to peek. I'm not going to peek. Okay, just, just open this. No way. I do I do not have any listen, controllers are my one of my favorite things to collect. I don't currently have them on display because we've just made too many changes here in the game room. Um, I'm not sure how you, how or if you knew this, but um, Dreamcast colored Dreamcast controllers have been really hard for me to find, so I definitely don't have that blue one. I've got an aftermarket blue one, of course, as I'm sure we all do. <laughs> That's beautiful, and it's in like perfect condition too feels very good it's very nice well thank you so much for that i'm uh as soon as we're done filming this i'm gonna just go ahead and get to work and catalog my psp <laughs> collection <laughs> all right and uh extra double thanks for the pokemon cards um last package here hoyman who i don't even have to look hoyman's from new york i better look just from in case brooklyn. i've lost my mind <laughs> yeah brooklyn new york um he sent us several packages before 
and some of my best RPGs are from this man. So uh, it's always exciting to see what's going to be in here. Does that look like there's something else in there? I don't. I just don't want to. I don't know. I can't well, tell. Well, too late now. <laughs> I've cut it. This might be hard to get into. Hoyman, you taped it up like Fort Knox. <laughs> All right, I got the top open. Watch your fingers. Oh my goodness. Well, I was going to keep this box. Well, it's ripped. <laughs> All right. Do you want to do this the same way or? Yes. You know, a sensible person would just get a razor blade, but. It's very true. I love my scissors. This is part of the entertainment to watch you struggle with these scissors. This is my most prized possession. All right. Note. Ooh. Dear Tindo and Hannah, AKA Dish Hunting Warrior. I, I like that. <laughs> Here is a stash of games from my collection. I hope you enjoy them as much as I did. Hoyman, I'm pumped. Let me put this with the rest of the notes. Okay. All right. Right on top. I think this is something you were well overdue for. No way. Okay, there's two of them. I guess you get one too. Yay. Listen, I don't know if I've complained about this on the channel or maybe just Hoyman noticed, but this was a bright yellow Legoland lanyard that I got from the Goodwill bins. Well overdue replacing. <laughs> Not only is it super dirty, as I'm sure you could tell, but the, uh, probably couldn't tell this, but the hook was pretty much broken on it. Done. Beautiful. It's my new daily driver. Okay, okay, what's this? Do you know what this is? No, I don't. I think this is from, uh, I think this is from, Fifth Element. Oh, cool. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's her ID card from Fifth Element. I don't think I should open this, but like, I'm keeping this. S did we answer a question earlier in the, uh, in the Q and A about what we'd like to collect? We yes. did, right? I should add an addendum to that. Movie props, like good quality movie props is something I'd like to collect. And that is one, that is beautiful. And it's a nice yellow color too, so put that on the yellow shelf. I think this one's for me. Well, look at it. It's Peter Rabbit. The Beatrix Potter collection. So not just Peter Rabbit, but her other works. That's pretty Aww. cool. Are these DVDs? Are these animated? They're, maybe they're, they're DVDs. That's so sweet. That is beautiful. BBC video based on the original authorized editions. That's beautiful. They it's are video, so but it's not clear whether or not they're animated cartoons or perhaps just like audio books with visualizations, but we'll have to pop it in and see. That's awesome. That is very pretty too. This is also for me. No. <laughs> There's two of them. Sims, the Sims Double Deluxe. There's just two copies. Well, maybe they're not the exact same thing. They've got like the same front but different backs, but I'm not gonna show you the backs because they've got the activation codes on it. Don't take my activation codes. Which coats. probably on these doesn't matter. It'll probably work for multiples, but beautiful. It's beautiful. Cool. I'll go ahead, just throw those there on the sim shelf. Okay, I haven't peeked anymore. P3F, persona, no way. Shin Megami Tensai, persona three. It's persona three. That's beautiful. Hoyman, you keep all your games in such perfect, beautiful condition. That's crazy. This one's neat. It feels metal. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have the collector's edition of this on um, 360, I think, but I don't think I have it on PS2. It's the metal case, splinter cell. Again, in completely lovely condition. That's beautiful. Mm. It's just something to look at right there. Borderlands Game of the Year edition. Very nice for PS3. God of War 2, let's go. I'm so bad at that game. I never finished it on PS2. <laughs> I think that's, that might actually be the one. I played that one on PS3. Oop. Let's go, let's go. Oh, sweet. We're playing this tonight. Heck yeah. Mega Man 11. My PS4 is actually plugged in and turned on right now. We can pop this in as soon as we're done. We're not really doing any thrifting today on today's video. We just set aside time to both rest and kind of reflect on this last year's video while we make a video for tomorrow. 
So all the stuff you guys are sending us is going to provide us ample entertainment for today. Because that's the other thing we're going to do today is play video games. Otagi 2? I've never even seen this game. That looks cool. Yeah. That's going to have to set front facing in my bedroom. Because that is beautiful. Final Fantasy 8. Yeah, I was like, wait a minute. No, 13, dummy. Roman numerals, you know. Takes a second sometimes. Batman, Arkham Asylum, PlayStation 3. Okay. That was it. I can't stop looking at this one. Look at that. So, as far as playability goes, your boy's going to play this tonight. But yeah, these, are, these are games that look like they're a big time commitment, and I need to find some time to get around to them. But I'm definitely going to be looking at them. This is so soft. I, I love a beautiful PlayStation 2 case. I just, I like that with the silhouette. And then honestly, I like that it's kind of changed up inside and look at the games manual. It's a nice little piece of artwork that going on. This is neat. This looks fun. It's got a cat in it. I'm sold. <laughs> oh my goodness. I got like a head. Like, you ever get so like excited and pumped that like your head just starts throbbing? That's how <laughs> I feel right now. Oh my gosh. I'm overwhelmed. I am too. Like, controller. You got jewelry. I got... I actually got VHS that I don't have for my Dragon Ball Z collection. All that's going on the shelf. I've always wanted to own one of these. I'm not even going to put this in the booth, I don't think. I think this is going to be going to be here in my Lego collection. I don't even know what else. Those, those Power Ranger cards are dope. I can't believe I finally own this game. I've come across it several times in the wild, and it's been missing. It's been missing its manual or the disc and stuff. And, so pretty. And the the rows of those minifigs, like, uh, now I've got to, you know what I need to do when we go to our toy booth? I need to come home with a Lego plate so I can just put a Lego plate over there and stick the minifigs we have on it. Because we've got a couple yeah. more in the room that we're keeping. But yeah. guys, thank you so much for all of that. Um, now I get to scan all the stuff in my collection. I'm super excited about it. But the video's not over, so stick around. We've got a couple more things we're going to get into today. It's going to be fun. Don't go anywhere. You know I'm a millennial whenever I can't put this back together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how does this work again? I don't remember. <laughs> well, there's that. Okay. We're going to talk about something I've struggled with a bunch over the last, well, 12 months for the last year. I always said when we started this channel, I was going to grow this out until our first year. It was kind of going to act as a reminder, you know, I'd look in the mirror, oh, your beard's getting long, oh, you're closer to posting a video every day for 365 days. Well, here we are, and honestly, as it got closer and closer, I kept thinking it's kind of become part of my image and stuff like that, maybe I should just leave it. And it's been tempting, but honestly, i tell you what's done my beard in, it's the corona. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because... <laughs> I'm not going to go on thrifting every day wearing a face mask with all this. The neck, we're going to have to keep wearing these face masks for months to come. I'm going to get rid of this and I'm going to have a comfortable time doing it. And uh, I probably won't keep shaving after we've done it. I'll probably let it grow back out. No promises though, but today, today we're going to get rid of it. So you guys probably barely know what I look like underneath this. Uh, I guess you can get to it. What are you gonna do? You're just gonna go at it. <laughs> She's gonna go at it raw. All right, you do you do whatever you think is necessary. Have you ever shaved a man's face before? I have not. Okay, well, <laughs> you're probably gonna see me die, but we're gonna keep on going with this here Q and A sesh, and we will answer some more of these questions as we do this. I don't know how this is gonna go. You're gonna get hair in my microphone too. I am. Do you want me to like? from here in or do you want to go middle out <laughs> <laughs> let's let's one just side, let's just side. let's carve it all down to like respectable and then <laughs> <laughs> no let's do let's, let's just do giant mustache oh no <laughs> yeah let's do it let's do it all right question and answer who's your favorite wrestler you want to answer that first no uh, i don't have one you always get really happy when john cena comes on tv <laughs> just because he's like, nah, 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 nah. Oh that's, shoot, that's, that's my hair. Not, <laughs> not a good start. Okay. Uh, I mean, The Rock. There's just a lot of nostalgia there for me. Um, this is probably be so loud in the microphone. We'll do this. Uh, what advice would you give to people just getting started in reselling? My hubby and I are wanting to, <laughs> are wanting to get out of the rat race and become self-sufficient. I never see you do anything but thrift stores. 
uh, do resource any other ways. Love you guys. All right, we've got a couple questions there. So straight up advice for people wanting to get into reselling. I would more so rather give you advice on just becoming self-sufficient. Uh, not necessarily reselling specifically. And the key to becoming self-sufficient... <laughs> I'm trying to act serious and it's impossible. The key to becoming self-sufficient is multiple revenue streams. So for us, um, a lot of our revenue streams are reselling, but not all of them. So we resell clothes. That's reselling, obviously. Our antique booths, another revenue stream. But, you know, YouTube is a revenue stream for us. And we're open... We're kind of being open to even more and more and more revenue streams. I still do the odd video editing job on the side. Revenue streams. So don't think of it so much as how do I get into reselling as uh, how can I find 10 different ways to make money that would replace my income. Maybe that's something you've already thought about and that's not new advice to you. But uh, that's that. As far as how to get into reselling, start with something you, that you're good at so you can hold your own interest in it. Because you're going to go, oh my God, I'm naked over here. <laughs> Just, I look real bad from just this side now. <laughs> You're asymmetrical right now. <laughs> <laughs> you want to just leave it? You want to go get dinner? <laughs> it's a look. You're edgy. <laughs> oh, I'm edgy. All right. Um, but I don't know. Reselling advice. I kind of alluded to this earlier. There, um, I kind of already answered this question. But it's easy to get caught up in a lot of things with reselling. And the reality is is that if you go to a thrift store, if you go to a flea market, you go anywhere where you're gonna source stuff, you're, everything there is resellable. Do you know what I mean? Every single thing at the thrift store is gonna sell somewhere. But you have to find a way to use your skill set and what you do and what you know to find things at the thrift, at the flea market, at the yard sales for you to sell. So it's gonna have to be stuff you can test you can potentially fix if you if there's a problem with it. So try to start sourcing stuff based off what you're good at and what you know. That's my best advice. I probably should have just left it at that last bit, but uh, no charge for the extra stuff. Um, here we go. What was Hannah doing before shifting into thrifting full time, i.e., job and or degree? Well, start with your degree. I am. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> A theater major with an emphasis in costume design, so. That's where a lot of the sewing stuff comes from. I'm a costume designer. But I recently was managing a bridal shop. Wedding dresses. And she was doing that right up until a few months ago when we kind of quit and started doing this full time. Uh, what's your favorite cartoon series? Mm. <laughs> this looks so ridiculous. <laughs> what's your favorite cartoon series? Courage the Cowardly Dog. Courage the Cowardly Dog. What's my favorite cartoon series? Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Z, probably. Uh, Gundam is up there. I'm blanking on every cartoon I've ever seen. Let's just go with Dragon Ball Z. Uh, what is a cool item or gadget you own that you highly recommend for camping or road tripping? Uh, my little... I, I've got a little dash thingy that my phone clips into so I can use my GPS sitting on my dash, which... That's not really a, a, a fancy thing, um, but mine is extra fancy because I've basically replaced the attachment arm with proper camera gear, so this phone actually gets a really nice hold. So I kind of made it myself, kind of not really. Uh, so I would recommend a good phone clamp for your dash. I, I don't know, maybe there's something better, but we are going to do some camping road tripping videos here really soon. <laughs> really, really soon, so we'll try to suggest some more products. This is the worst goatee in the world. You just are constantly <laughs> making yourself laugh. Um, okay, what else? We'll suggest, yeah, we'll suggest some more products coming up. Another question about <laughs> all the stickers left on my games. People get really upset about that, but uh, maybe stickers are easier to remove where you're from. But for us, it takes a whole coating of, uh, what do we use, slider fluid sometimes. There's a lot of sticker removal. Uh, techniques and we know all of them we've tried them all none of them are fast enough for me to warrant doing it every single day that I bring home video games so there's that what is your most favorite system what is the first system you own what's the first system you own NES NES it was the first one for me was a Super Nintendo uh, I didn't I never owned an NES growing up but I did play one at a friend's house a lot growing up oh my gosh <laughs> oh, in my eyes <laughs> All right, here's a, here's a big question. You sound like you've done traveling quite a bit. 
Have you zeroed in on what part of the country you'd like to permanently settle down in? Um, right now, we kind of agree Phoenix is probably going to stay our home base where we kind of keep our roots. Um, that's mostly originally that decision was made because we uh, found the thrifting to be so great here. So for now, that's it. If not, we really like living on the West Coast simply for the weather. But that's really our only two options so far. <laughs> I'm scared to do your chin. <laughs> Keep us moving. Well, I'm trying to read. Um, Find a question for me or something. What are the differences thrifting from region to region, and what would us folks who haven't necessarily thrifted in other parts of the country immediately notice is different, besides the multitude of goodwills in a given area like you apparently have near Phoenix? That's a good question. And there's no real, like, solid... <laughs> Let's get a close look at this. Your face looks, just, like, short. What's up, everybody? Tindo here. That's going to be the intro of this video. <laughs> um, so, I don't know. There's no super easy answer to that question. I will say it's different everywhere. There are some places you will go, and it, it won't be really the highest quality items, but it'll all be cheap. It'll all be a dollar. But usually I do see a correlation where, like, here in town, if there's more thrift stores and higher quality items, the prices are more. People love to come in and watch just one of our videos and just go, your prices are too high. I can't believe you, you pay those prices. And, you know, they don't really consider the differences, you know, because we've been all over and we've seen places with cheaper prices, but normally when we see those cheaper prices, we don't see the near, near the volume that we find here. So I don't really know how to answer that other than to just say it's different everywhere. So the next question is basically our worst experience with other resellers. We haven't had too many. Luckily, we're pretty lucky to have made a lot of friends that are resellers here that we all kind of help each other out. Um, sometimes I do go to the thrift store and it's immediately obvious that someone uh, recognizes me when we walk in the door because you see them run to the video games and check them before <laughs> I get there. But that's probably the worst. Those people have kind of, you know interesting uh probably too late for the q a nope you're just in time but i always wonder this with people who have big collections do you have your collection insured so we have an insurance policy that is almost exactly equal to the total value of my collection right now though um so no technically the answer is no we don't have it specifically insured but we do have our apartment i just looked at myself in the mirror <laughs> how about that we do have this apartment insured, so if someone still, if, if the place burned down, we could probably get just enough money to co cover my camera equipment and my video collection. So yes, kind of, no, but I know some people have insurance policies, usually homeowner policies that list everything, but right now we just have a general policy that basically covers the value. You're ready for your mustache. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be hard for me to talk, but we're going to try it. Don't okay. hurt. <laughs> I mean, if I start talking funny, it's because she's under the mustache. Hold on. We need, I got a before image before we started. Here's the middle. <laughs> and uh, we'll get an after image when we're done. Um, yeah, good question, though. Uh, the last question on the Discord, this, we're pretty much almost done with the Discord questions now. Do you accept requests for certain things? Like, for example, I saw a crochet blanket at one thrift store in your video and interested, etc., etc., etc. So the answer to that is just a pretty blanket no. And I, it's a little bit difficult because we are resellers. We spend all of our spare time um, listing things on eBay, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And at this point, until we get more help or something, there's just no way for us to continuously try to sell things to you. Because I'm not kidding. This is not an exaggeration. I get 10 or 15 messages every single day. People asking for stuff. And the only way we'd ever be able to really... Uh, actually sell to all those as if we pretty much just quit and just began to only sell to our audience so in general our answer to that question is if you see something in one of our videos you want check our ebay page if it's on there you're more than welcome to buy it if not uh just wait and see if it pops up and that's generally how we handle all oh, this is getting hard to do <laughs> that's generally how we handle that situation right now that could change in the future with more help and more ability to post stuff but Right now, it's all we can do just to get our clothing <laughs> eBay stuff posted. This is difficult, isn't it? <laughs> it's so hard. All right, well, guys, that has to go. Keep going. Um, that's all the Discord questions. I don't know if we'll get to the YouTube questions today. We'll see how the rest of this video goes if I don't die first. Um, this is very dangerous. We got a buh. Okay, maybe I should do this bit. 
Oh. I'm just scared to cut your lip. <laughs> Whoa. Baby face. How different do I look? Uh, that... Is that the after picture or should I shave first? I look super five o'clock shadow. Um, we're gonna cut my hair too, so maybe we'll get the after picture of that. But that's all the Discord questions we're gonna do. Um, I don't know if we'll get on to the YouTube questions or not. We've got a bunch of questions on YouTube, but we might save those for another video. So if you didn't exactly get your question answered in this video, I don't want to make this video 16 hours long, so we tried to answer a variety there. But uh, what do you think? Are you guys gonna quit watching because the beard's gone? Having you look nice. <laughs> you, you like it better? I do. <laughs> I like the way it feels better. I already feel 100% lighter. I didn't mind the beard, but when it got that long, I don't know if you noticed, it was starting to separate into like giant handlebars. bars. <laughs> it was going like this. And no matter how I brushed it twice a day, it would still stay that way. And I'm not high maintenance enough to put like gel and stuff in my beard, so it was never going to work out. I think I'm going to look 100% better. I, the problem I'm having with what I'm seeing in this camera right now is the Pomeranian on my <laughs> So, you guys, you, you, that was torture, I'm sure, to watch and listen to all that. So, you guys go away for a second and we'll come back with a haircut. What do you think? You Sounds think so? <laughs>
of all the videos we've made were the video that I brought home like a thousand pairs. <laughs> that was a good one. I talk about it all the time because I feel like I haven't topped it yet. And it was really early on. Uh, you guys comment below if you have a video in mind from our last 365 days worth of videos that you just recall or think about sometimes and it's your favorite video of ours. I'd really like to know. You know that moment that you shave and the wind blows on your face for the first time? That's interesting. That's always a thing you go through, but nothing is weirder than this cloth on my face right now. It's so weird, it's not something I'm used to. Turns out this Joann's is kind of sold out of most of the cool print stuff. The only print stuff I'm finding is blanket, and I do not need a blanket for my face. I do not. Uh, so I don't know, maybe we're gonna buy something more solid, more boring, I don't know. We're trying to figure that out, hold on. Here's some regular. How about some cat in the hat? This is all pretty elasticy. Should I walk around with cat in the hat on my face? What do you think? Ooh, Here we know. go. <laughs> Doctor Who's all I wanted. Really, the next option and the option that's becoming more and more likely is that we're just going to sacrifice some of my actual bandanas to make them into face masks with proper ear rings. What do you say? Ear pieces? I don't know. Elastic. But I did want something Doctor Who, which this is not. It's a. Uh, the who not to be confused with but uh i got excited when i saw the who part nothing hold up what'd you find what'd you find well that's yours yep done that's what you're getting uh well, oh did you see this one jack skelly this is even kind of cute i'm not a care bear person but that's cute that's cool that is pretty but are you, you're going with Spongebob though, aren't you? Yeah, this is a knit anyway. Well, Operation Face Mask is a rip, but we're going to buy a new Cricut cutter because we're here and we've been talking about buying one. So that's how we're celebrating 365 videos. We're buying something uh, to make more stuff with, to make more work. We're <laughs> celebrating by doing more work. I want you to look at this massive thing. It's huge. Look at it. This is how much of a vacation day we're taking. We're not gonna go home and cook. We don't wanna do any extra work. So we're at this new joint called Salad and Go. Now, do you have Salad and Go's in your area? They just randomly started popping up like wildflowers around here. They're just all of a sudden on every corner. We haven't had it yet. We've been wanting to try it, but it's like it's supposed to be pretty cheap salads, but like pretty large proportions. And uh, I'm pretty excited about that, but I'm only telling you all this because I want you to know that my name backwards is Salad. Just in case you didn't know, <laughs> Dallas backwards is salad with an extra L. Now you know. We're gonna. I'm gonna have a buffalo chicken and a barbecue ranch, and a 24 ounce lemonade. All right, we got it. We got it. We're good. Uh, look at this packaging. That just looks great. I don't know. I, I like good packaging. Let's give an official review of the lemonade real quick. I'm gonna go with the. That's almost a four star lemonade. I would agree with that. It's almost a four star. It's fine. It's fine. Look at the lid. It says made to order with love. <laughs> Cute. Look at this orange fork. I love these vibrant colors going on. The orange, the blue cricket. It's going to be a good day. This beautiful blue cricket machine works wonderfully and I'm very happy with the purchase. Just to show you real quick what I made. This was the test cut little i guess it's california bear i don't know but i also made these pokemon stickers which i'm very happy about i just made a few of them to stick on the back of my laptop here i am very happy with this machine i've been wanting a new one for a long time but that's gonna be it for the day just want to show you real quick what we got out of it i appreciate you hanging with us on this anniversary video hannah's over here sewing some jeans up we're just gonna work through the night, I guess. We tried to take the day off, which we did. It was nice not having to run all around town and, you know, we took a day off from thrifting, I guess is what I should say. But we got plenty of other work in. I hope you enjoyed the q and I hope you enjoyed some of the other stuff we did. And uh, come back tomorrow, because we're gonna be hitting the thrift. I don't think we're gonna go to the bins tomorrow, but I think the day after that would definitely be a bins video. So hit the subscribe button, make sure those notifications are turned on so when we get to doing all that, you can definitely get a notification, come back and hang out with us then. Now before you go, do check out our merch store, tenostrash.com, because you saw that machine, there will definitely be some new merch really, really soon. Not gonna be able to get it up by the time this video is live, but I've got a really cool idea for a Hannah Warrior Princess sticker. So 
If you're into that kind of thing, definitely check out our merch store, tinnotrash.com. Check out our public Discord. That's where I got all of those questions for the Q&A today. Um, so when we do that kind of thing, the Discord will be very much so where we do it from. So go join it if you haven't already. And that's going to be it. Hit the subscribe button. I'm hoping by the time you watch this, we actually hit 5,000. Uh, we're like 20 or 30 away right now as of finishing this video. So I guess that means we technically didn't do 5,000 in our first year, but we got really close. We're like 20 away. So I'm just going to call it done. You know what I mean? But if you're new and you're watching and you haven't hit that subscribe button, maybe hit it now and help us get to that 5,000. That's going to be it, guys. We do post daily videos here on this channel, so make sure you come back tomorrow and hang out with us then. And until then, peace out.